Right, welcome back. Now, uh, the next time you fancy a few days away to a place with fantastic food is matched by the stunning scenery, you might want to consider somewhere a little different. Forget the bog standard big hitters that everybody's familiar with and take some tips from my next guest, the editor of Brat Guide. Uh, it's Adrian Phillips. Welcome to my house. Thank you, uh, Now, this is an interesting thing, really, because we all think this time of year about holidays and, and where to go. The world's a big place. You can go a little bit nearer, and you're going to tell us a few little places and, and some oddball ones, which I I would never. There are a few off the off the beaten track here as a, as a short break destination. You know, everybody thinks of Paris and Rome, but I wanted to yeah. go for something a little bit different from and, that. And you've yeah. genuinely been to all these places. I have, have some photographs have, with you as yeah. well. So, so you, I, I, absolutely, I've bought photographic proof. You've got I have first been to all hand. These yeah, it's not photoshopped. It's photographic. It's <laughs> photo, photographic proof. Absolutely. So, so yeah. where are we going to start first? Then we're going to start. We're going to start in in Hungary, which is a, all places, yes, okay. in Budapest, which um, some. Some people may have gone to, I mean, it became a big stag destination, which is a, it's a shame to a degree, but it's an absolutely beautiful city. I sort of have to say that because I'm married to a Hungarian, so this right, has okay. been the one I've had so to be on the list then, right? Absolutely now. has to be in there. Yeah. But it's uh, an absolutely beautiful city, a city of two halves, Pest on one side of the river, Buda on the other, the so medieval So we see in the side. pictures now, Pest is on the right There it right is, so side. on the right as you look at it, that's okay. Pest with the, the Parliament building, which is actually modelled on the British Parliament building okay. um, there. And then on the left there's a medieval quarter. Um, and it's very Parisian in feel, but much cheaper, smaller, easier to get around. Right. And the food is far better than it was even 10 years ago because it was okay. behind the uh, Iron Curtain 20 years ago. So service industry was their nowhere. From? All, all, the different all around, and that's a really interesting it. thing. Influence is coming from all over. Lots of um, influence from the Turkish period, in the medieval period, when they were under Ottoman rule. And also they're under Habsburg rule as well. So you have. Austro, uh, Austrian influences in the yeah. cakes, for instance, but also um, uh, s sort of Eastern influences. So is it in a little bit like Prague or not? Not, 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 not dissimilar. Not I mean, dissimilar. yeah, absolutely. That, that, that yeah. sort of thing. You get more dumplings in Prague. In, in Hungary, obviously, the classic is goulash, yeah. um, which everybody knows, but that's a soup rather than a stew. Most people think of that as a stew. It's a soup, actually, and usually. So we've got, we've got a few, just a couple of things here. We have. Uh, these pancakes, you'll find these all over the place. You will. I mean, this is probably my favourite dish that you can get in Hungary. It's called the Horta Baji. Palacinta uh, pancake, and it's um, a, a, a savoury pancake filled with usually veal mince, right. and then baked in the oven with a paprika and sour cream sauce. Okay. Um, Hortobaji is an area in the east of Hungary. It's a, 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 an area of great, a plain area where cowboys, and it's a very tr romantic area in, in Hungarian um, sort of folklore. Yeah. This didn't come from there. Right. They've, just, they've just put the marketeers spin on it to give it that that okay. uh, sort of romantic edge to it. And you said um, they take the influence in their patisserie as well. I can see that. By yeah, it. I mean, absolutely. This beautiful. Yeah, this is called a dobosh torta, um, and it was uh, it was this first. One. You please do. Yeah, yeah it, it, it's first created in the late 1800s by someone called Josef Dobosh, and what he wanted to do was create a cake that didn't dry out too easily because they didn't have um, easy ways of, of of keeping things cool in those days. So it's got these layers of special um, of sponge and a, a chocolate buttercream, and then on top this hard caramel, and uh, the, the edges are, are usually um, covered with ground nuts, and that mm. kept it kept it moist basically, and so it became very popular across Europe. It could be easily transported. It's great. It's like a tort where you've got the mousse like a tort, but. Yeah. A little bit of cake mix yeah. in and, and the sort of cr sort of harder caramel top. And yeah. It doesn't look it, but it's actually quite light. Yes, that's right. Not it is. too, no, not too heavy. Not too strong. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. that's yeah. another place yeah. we could go. Um, that's Budapest. Um, now t we're going further north for this one. Uh, Sweden. That's fantastic. I mean, a really stunning country to go visit. It, it really is. I, I've only been once. I went in the autumn and. I did a seafood safari, which is what I wanted to put in my list here. I, I, it, it's, they, they, um, you can go in search of the big five. Which so we've are, actually got some you've pictures got some of, of this. the big five. We've got yeah. some of pictures of this. Yeah. Yeah. This is you about to go on a seafood, seafood, seafood safari. This is right, yeah. The, the, you go in the, the big five, which are um, lobster, crab, mussels, uh, prawns, and oysters. Um, the North Sea there is very cold, and what it means is that the seafood, um, the shellfish grow very slowly, and it gives a depth of, of flavour to them, which, which um, the Swedes will argue is far better than anywhere else in the world. And the these particular oysters are, almost look like our native oysters. That's flat right, shelled. they're flat-shelled, yeah, and they, they take much longer to, to, to develop. They've got a quite a minerally taste to them. Yeah. Um, they're much more expensive. The ones you usually get in, in, um, in your restaurants here will be Japanese oysters, which are rounder. Yeah. Um, these are, 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 are far more expensive, six times more expensive because of the, the time it takes for them to grow. Yeah. The season for the seafood is in autumn. The, the colours on the trees are this sort of whiskey colour. It's, it's absolutely stunning. Cold, but, yeah. it, but absolutely stu so you have to wear all the 
you know, yeah, the, the but thermals. A beautiful but country to go. Beautiful visit. country, and you go out with the fishermen on their boats. They bring up the the catch. You eat it on, on the boat, or in you know, as you saw, there was a little cabin on an island. Right. Wonderful experience. I'd recommend it to anyone. Don't Fabulous. eat. I mean, practice eating oysters in advance. It's very funny going from eating <laughs> oysters rarely here to eating fifty across a weekend. Yeah. It can have re repercussions. Build yourself and up. And that to might it. be at the airport just for exactly you play. right. From experience. So we're going to go further <laughs> down south now. Now this is one of the places where. I couldn't believe it when, when you said you were going to go to, go to this place. Tell me about this place, Sarajevo. Sarajevo, um, one of the most beautiful cities you will ever go to. I, I went there a few years ago on the first direct flight from the UK. They don't run anymore, unfortunately, so you have to go to fly in directly. In travel writing, you're meant never to use the cliche where east meets west. It's sort yeah. of the big cliche. I'm going to say absolutely this fits that cliche right. at, at the risk of getting chucked out of the British Guild of Travel Writers. <laughs> That's the, it, it's, it's got this um, uh, medieval Turkish quarter right at the centre with um, you know, copper smiths working and these, these wonderful markets selling woven carpets and, and lanterns. And then just a few short streets away, this neoclassical architecture from the Habsburg Empire, big right. Roman Catholic churches. It's this real, real blend. But of course, it's got that recent history, the longest see, got, I mean, we're seeing some of the recent history as well. Uh, the, uh, the, 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 the bullet holes in the buildings. It, I mean, you can't get away from that. And then particularly the tragic, tunnels. Tragic, yeah. It's, I mean, th this is a city that was under the longest siege in modern history. One of the, the, the things you can go and see there is a stretch of tunnel, an escape tunnel that was built from uh, a family's house in the outskirts. And they built it with, I mean, with uh, dug it with spoons and this with anything the they could get. This is see now. This is you, it here. It yeah. stretches a kilometre out. It was deliberately dug underneath the airport where the UN were based, because they knew even if the Serbs got to hear about it, they couldn't really bomb the UN airport airstrip. So it's quite clever it went underneath, and people brought fuel and uh, ammunition in and out through this, this tunnel. It's, it's really very, very moving. And, and, and quite staggering to think this was only 92 it, to 95. It is I mean, this is, this is to think it's, so it's in our lifetime as well. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. It's and and the food that we've got in here, it's, it's food. Dare I yeah. say Middle Eastern sort of. Again, yeah, sort of influence. absolutely. <laughs> influenced by um, uh, the Turkish occupation again that the Balkans were under. This is, this is called sevapi, which is like a kofta kebab, m yeah. um, minced beef or lamb served with uh, sour cream and onions in a, a, a pita bread. This was um, under the Ottoman occupation. It was a very popular food with outlaws and rebels because it was easy on the run. You know, they, yeah. could, they could make it quickly and leg it. Yeah. <laughs> um, so that's very popular. This is um, more, it's, sort of a, it's eaten at any time of day actually, but it's much more of a sort of street food um, called a burek, um, which again is filled with minced meat and uh, wrapped in, in flaky pastry and rolled in this spiral and cut right. into sections. They do different versions called different things with spinach and cheese inside and potatoes yeah. and so on but th but this is the, the classic and they've still got it. amazing street foods and markets there haven't they yeah. uh, uh, absolutely obviously it's, stunning it's, it's stunning beautiful in this city okay so we're going to hop it. over the water mm -hmm. here venice would be about here uh, hop yep. over into italy for this one really yes the cinque terra which is um five villages um a unesco site the five villages pinned to to, to the coastline very dramatic the medieval villages because um, when you hear, when you think of this, you think of the Amalfi Coast, and we can yeah. see that on the screen now. You'd think that was Amalfi. This Absolutely. Is, this is further north. I've yeah, never never right. heard of this place. Yeah, Cinque Terre. It's actually quite. It's it's very enclosed. It's it's the the. the Residents there almost don't want tourists there. They can be quite miserable. Right, we'll stop and now. They, <laughs> there is this sense that they, you know, they would rather <coughs> you weren't there. I think that's just the way they are. But there's yeah. no cars really allowed in there. You have to go in by train. Right. But nevertheless, it's actually quite popular. They get two million visitors, despite the fact that uh, this is quite enclosed and isolated. Yeah. Um, Monte Rosso, one of these villages in particular, very well known for, for its anchovies. And the fishermen still catch them in the traditional way, which is to go out at night in a boat with a big lamp and they, sh they shine it at the water, and the anchovies come like, well, anchovies to the flame. Yeah. <laughs> and they, they, they then net them and take them in, and these are eaten stuffed, fried, salted, Beautiful. but, but or, or, you know, I think the best way um, with, with, with lemon and uh, white wine vinegar and exactly. olive oil. Sat like that. in one of those harbours, absolutely beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. So they may not want you to go, but seriously go, because it is beautiful. And moving on to our <laughs> final place, because this is fascinating. Moving on to our final place, we're going to jump into Portugal, through Spain, um, into Portugal. Where, where would you recommend in Portugal? Then? I would say Alentejo, which is a region just above the Algarve. Everyone goes to the Algarve, you know, trying to crowd, crowded beaches, trying to fight for their, their space on the sand. Alentejo is this region just above it that for some reason, it's a big region, nobody seems to know about. And, and I've never understood why. You go there, there are beautiful hilltop uh, medieval villages, um, some lovely architecture. Um, 
and people, you don't, just don't see many tourists there. The beaches you have to yourself, it's, yeah. it's quite incredible. We've got one dish from that area which we'll just talk, talk, talk about now, which is, a, it's kind of a soup with a poached egg in it. It's called, yeah, <laughs> that's a good summary. Would that be right? It's good, very good. It's called a bread soup. It's a, yeah. And actually, in a way, the bread is the most important thing. It's called a sorda. And um, it's, this is a very poor region, and they make what they can with what they've got. And yeah. at, its, at its most basic, it's just um, crushed garlic, crushed coriander, and salt. And, and then put in a broth, yeah. and that's what they would eat at the that's poorest level. And then bread, sorry, stale yeah. bread in there. But then they add to it, they put poached eggs in there, they put shrimps in there, yeah. they put peppers in, cod, um, and, and it makes a very tasty broth. Yeah, and, and, uh, again, a, a lovely dish, very, very simple. Well, thanks for that, Adrian. Uh, I love that, it's brilliant. A trip through Europe with food, brilliant, brilliant. You're definitely coming back. Uh, <laughs> Talking about that, I'm back in the kitchen next.